hard parts are basically the weather and being out here with staying in a tent, whatever, you know, you get the snow, the rain, the sickness. So basically just like the bodily functions and everything. It's like, it's like you're a disease walking down the street. Whether people want to treat you like a human or not, it's up to them. It's, you know what, sometimes it's a real son of a bitch, man. Over the course of the summer, there were um, a little over 200 um, encampments throughout uh, St. Paul. The unsheltered homelessness situation uh, in St. Paul, in our region, in Minnesota, um, is a, a crisis that we need to um, that we need to address. I uh, I had, had uh, some bad luck. You know, I had lost a job of 14 years. You know, for anyone that thinks that. It can't happen to you. You know, it, it can. I say stress, problems, you know, how to get here and there, how I'm gonna get on the bus, what clothes I might wear, and... I, you know, I didn't come right away because I was a little bit embarrassed, you know, shy, you know, things like that. But yeah, when I did finally come, you know, I was, uh, I was welcomed. I was very surprised because I, I wasn't expecting the people to to want to be so helpful. When I took off from the shelter or whatever, or, or for eating wherever, I took off alone. It's hard to stay on the streets at night and um, come to listening house during the day. It was there for me every you know every single day. key part of the strategy to help all of our residents find stability is efforts like what Listening House does. I notice when people are on their way here, you know, they, there's a certain calmness that comes over them when they're getting here. They're going to be able to relax and get their thoughts together. They're going to be able to plan their day and they're going to make the phone calls. They're going to be able to get a way to get to the job interviews. You know, they're going to get somebody that's going to give them a smile and a hello and welcome and it, it just, it makes a big difference. <laughs> Our goal here is pretty much to make sure people are fed, make sure people are clothed, and try to get people housed, and do all that with a smile, and basically boost people up. Try to, we try to be cheerleaders. And I sew for these folks. I do mending, and I repair backpacks, I repair jackets, anything that needs a repair. I think one of the most gratifying parts about being here is just being present with the folks that are here. Fill me up more than I believe that I'm giving to them. Family, they like to encourage you. It's like to make you want to be better and do better. You know, make you want to, you know, I can do this, you know. I, I, I can succeed, I, I, can, I can do this, I can, you know, they, it's like a boost to help you do it. You know, to help, you know, that reinsurance. They helped us out with shoes, clothing, food, vouchers, housing, and basically, basically the listening house gave us life. Thursday morning from 9 till 10.30 is foot washing day. We arrive and we wash feet. We feel we get far more out of it than we give. We have absolutely come to love the people who come here. We consider them our friends. We have built relationships. And it's, it's been, I would say, a life-transforming mission. The goal is really to get engagement, to have engagement with them. Um, and we work based off of their goals. So if their goal is housing, great. If their goal is finding a mental health provider, great. So it's all about you know meeting the person where they're at and meeting them at Listening House is really a place that allows that. Listening House is probably one of the most important places I've ever had in my life. Uh, if it wasn't for Listening House, seriously, I don't think I'd have made it. Listening House is a helping, hopeful, warm place in order to come to. I was just calling you to let you know 
I love you and I'm thinking about you. That's about it. Cause of Our ultimate goal needed to be to find housing for individuals. For us, every single person that Listening House helps um, connect to um, housing supports and, and permanent housing, um, that's critically important. I am 42 years old. Both my parents were addicted to drugs when I was born. Because of their drug addiction, I was molested and, 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 and touched as a child. It broke me because I had nowhere to live and, and, and I was homeless. And I met everybody at the listening house and um, it made me feel like that if I continue to listen and take the help that they're giving me, I could come through this. So we definitely try to motivate and that's the main thing is motivate and keep them pushing and through that, there, there comes housing. It really feels wonderful to have my own house. Without them, I would not have found this. I'm at home and I can cook my own food and eat. I'm not hungry, wondering where I'm gonna get my next meal. I can go in the bathroom and take a bath. It's the greatest feeling. You can lay down and go to sleep with no stress. You can lay down and go to sleep with no stress. The financial support and the volunteer support is so important because that's, that's what allows Listening House uh, to be there. And, and to be that resource and we need that connection in order to help end homelessness in our city.